moving right along. Next, I saw Terrifier 3. Oh man, it's here, folks. Terrifier 3, it's a big phenomenon, and I'm here for it. I love Art the Clown. I am all in on these Terrifier movies. Now, are all of them great? Not really. Uh, <laughs> but I think there's memorable things in each one of them. I think this third one is the best one. I think they just get better and better. I, I remember rating the first Terrifier movie pretty low, but that was mainly because it was just so long. And I think Terrifier 2 is even longer. I think that's the longest one, like over two hours long, which, you know, any good horror fan would know, especially in the slasher genre. This is a 90 minute uh, format you're doing. You don't do two hour long slasher movies. I mean, this is just, just not a not par for the course normally. But yeah, um, I just think, you know, I just, what I love about slashers is I don't think they're, you know, I don't see them as regular horror movies. I think slashers are, you know, for my taste, they have kind of an over-the-top, almost ridiculous, almost comedic edge to them. Uh, whereas the kills are so over the top and so insane in so many cases that I think that's where I find myself not getting too grossed out. Where I'm like, okay, this is to the this is to the point where now they're just they're just playing with guts. They're just you know um, playing with props to see like there's a there's an art to it to see how fucked up and how insane the kills can be. There was an insane kill in. Um, in a violent nature from earlier this year that was pretty memorable to be like oh wow i didn't see that before but they're just such insane outlandish kills you know that they're not even that believable it's more just oh wow what's the most fucked up and insane body horror way we can find to kill someone you know um when it comes to things like i don't know torture stuff like saw like those are the movies that type of stuff is where i can't handle it you know with this stuff it's more like there's almost a a grindhouse type of vibe to these movies uh, where they're supposed to be a little, they're meant to be over the top and meant to be ridiculous. Um, and that's where the fun is. And, and I just like, I like the grindhouse nature of movies like this. Um, would you call them grindhouse movies? Yeah, maybe not. I think that, I think slashers are a little different, but, but I think they're in the same, you can, there are a lot of, you know, there are a lot of um, overlapping similarities there in tone and in execution. Uh, what I what I love so much about Terrifier 3 is I think there are much more memorable moments in this one. The idea of making it a Christmas story, and that's what I think Art the Clown, why he makes for such a great horror villain, is, you know, the whole idea is that he's 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 like a mime, you know, he doesn't speak and he emotes and the performance of, uh, you know, whatever his name is. Um, what is his name? David Le Damien Leon is the director. Art the Clown is David Howard Thornton. Um, yeah, he's great in these movies. Um, such a physical performance. Like, literal, he's literally playing a mime where he has to give all these facial expressions. And what I love about Art the Clown is you kind of just see things from his perspective a lot of the time in these movies you see him like going to figure out like his next like all right how do i fucking kill these people like you see him like just take i i will never not laugh at seeing art the clown like just get on a bus or get on a subway with like a <laughs> fucking <laughs> some garbage bag full of like torture tools or body parts and he just like sits on the He's just like a, I love that we see things from his perspective. Like he'll get annoyed with like his sidekick. He's, he's, he's literally a cartoon character. Um, and that's what I find so amusing about his character. Um, it just, just the opening scene in this movie, Terrifier 3 was such gold. It was such gold. <laughs> when, when he goes into the kid's room, they're like, Julianne, I told you not to come into my room. And you just hear, whew, whew, whew. 
<laughs> I laughed so hard. Oh, it's just so funny. It's like there's there's a certain comedic tone that this thing hits where it just makes me laugh uh or the scene in the mall um in this movie is one of the best bits in the terrifier movies that made me laugh so hard it's like at this point art the clown he's not even like a slasher villain in that scene he was just a domestic terrorist <laughs> it's Oh, I find I just I am on the wavelength of so much of this movie. And, you know, there's like the standard kind of not that interesting human characters and like the storyline going on. It's fine. It's serviceable. What I find interesting about these Terrifier movies, because this one very much ties into the second Terrifier movie, I think the final final girl in this movie wasn't even in the first movie. I think the first movie was like just completely different characters just introducing art the clown as a as an entity uh but there's like this whole other thing going on with these movies like almost like this subplot thing with the humans where the main girl is like has this sword that she has like these valkyrie like superpowers when she gets this sword that can defeat art and there's like the girl that like there's there's people that are like arts um like sidekicks in these two movies and in this one it's like like a zombie girl that like can speak and is talking a lot in this movie and there's like all of this other super supernatural there's like another dimension like another realm in these movies that i guess like art is from but it's funny when they go into that stuff especially in the third act of this movie uh there's like all of this stuff about like this sword that gives this girl powers and this other dimension that I'm sure they're going to discuss more in the, in the next movie, you know, it's going to be explored more, but I just find it kind of amusing that when all of this is going on, it feels like all of this stuff is kind of completely detached from art. Like the girl, the, his evil sidekick girl is doing all the talking and there's all this stuff with this sword and this evil dimension stuff. And it feels like none of this really, like, I guess art is from this other dimension, but he just seems like he doesn't give a shit about any of this stuff. He's just like standing there in the corner in the third act of this movie. Like, no, I'm just trying to fucking kill people like a cartoon villain. Like, I don't, I don't, what, what is all this other stuff with this sword and these Valkyrie powers? Like, I don't even know what's going on with that stuff. And I don't think art does either, which I just found very funny. Uh, so yeah, the, so much to love in this movie the bar scene just where he's just fucking with people and there's it's just comedy man it just art is a very a, he's not michael myers he doesn't look like you just get to spend time with him just fuck with people before he kills them not even in a torturous way it's just he's he's like genuinely excited to see santa claus uh and then the shower scene which was like a, a legit uh, slasher movie scene. They're like, there are some parts where I gotta kind of look away a little bit, and I'm like, oh god, this is what they're doing with this kill? Ooh, okay. Um, but pretty quickly, it's just, okay, this person is not even, like, this person is so mangled um, and dead, it's not even a... This is a guy just playing with flesh at this point, and there are parts where I'm like, okay, I can't really handle that, but it, you, you try to tell yourself, okay, it's just, it's just, like, like he's he's playing, it, there's, a, there's supposed to, it's supposed to be so over to the top, I think I'm I'm trying to get on the slasher fan wavelength a little bit with this stuff. Um, so there are a lot of those thrills. Uh, yeah, there there was something else in this movie. But I, I think, or I was going to say, I think the second Terrifier movie, there's a whole scene in a bedroom. I think that was the one that had me like squirm the most. But other than that, um, you know, there's brutal, gory slasher stuff. But again, I think it's just so over the top. I think they're supposed to be like a cartoony element to this stuff. And I know that's kind of weird to say when it's like m massacring people and cutting them up, but I don't know. There's like a weird tone and art to it. No pun intended. Uh, but yeah. And then when it, when it starts playing, it's a terrifier Christmas. I was like, Oh yes, yes. I'm on this movie's level. Uh, again, just really giving me those grindhouse vibes, uh, you know, but, but in the, form of like a legit slasher movie um so yeah this was this was one of the stronger movies i've seen this year again it's too long these movies aren't amazing uh mainly it's 
mainly I, I go for the there's memorable bits in each one of them. And I think this movie has the most of it. Um, I think this movie being a Christmas movie, I think they use that a lot to um, its benefit. I think they could have done more with it, but I think they do a pretty good job of just art wanting to be Santa Claus. <laughs> it works so well. Uh, so yeah, it's such a great character. I, I love I love these Terrifier movies. Um, I can't wait for another one. Um, just like a midnight movie. Just such a fun midnight movie thing, you know? Um, so yeah, that is... That's Terrifier 3. Um, you know, it's it's up there with one of the better things I've seen this year. It's different. It's it's scratching an itch of a genre that we don't see a lot of big productions out of. So really, really excited about this franchise. So yeah. That's Terrifier 3. Best one out of the best one out of the trilogy, uh, out of the series so far.